name is Kyle with Dino Navionics, and today we're going to talk about the SkyViewCom radio. We'll cover its basic wiring architecture and go more in depth on the variety of ways you can take full advantage of its capabilities. The features of this radio will truly change the cockpit management and flight planning scene in your aircraft. Our system consists of three main pieces. A remotely mounted transceiver, which is available in 25 or 8.33 kHz spacing for various markets. An SV COM panel, which is available in a horizontal or vertical orientation. And lastly, a Skyview display. The control panel connects to the displays over the Skyview network, which enables the display itself to be an additional controller of the radio. This allows you to use both numeric keypad on the HDX as well as its aeronautical database of published frequencies for airports worldwide. Let's start with just using the SVCOM panel. As you can see here, the panel has an LCD display, as well as five labeled buttons for the most commonly used frequency station types, tower, ground, ATIS, and ATC. The last button is labeled APT for airport, and by clicking this, you can now use your dual rotator knob to scroll through the nearest airport list or dial in a specific airport code, then click the knob in to select the airport. Doing this loads all of the published frequencies for that airport code into the tower, ground, ATIS, and ATC buttons. Ground and ATIS work just as one would expect. Any airfield with a published ground frequency can be brought up with a single click, and ATIS will bring up whatever weather observation is available at that field, be it ASOS, AWOS, ATIS, etc. Pressing tower will bring the primary tower frequency up first. In the case of a busy airport, maybe with parallel runways, there may be a tower 2 option by pressing tower again. For non-towered airports, this action will pull up either the CTAF, Unicom, or Multicom frequency. Pressing ATC will cycle through all known frequencies such as approach or departure. If there are multiple, such as a busy airport like SeaTac, it will cycle through all the options. SeaTac ATC is a good example of when it may be a much easier choice to use the HDX display as opposed to the COM panel. When you are on the info page of Skyview, you have three fields at your disposal to select the right airport. You can search either by airport code, airport name, or airport city. And the big benefit here is that you only need to know one of those three. Or of course, you can simply tap on the airport on the moving map or select from your nearest list. Once you have the airport selected, you can click APT to COM. This will load the entire list of published frequencies, just like choosing from the nearest list or punching in the code on the COM panel. Additionally, either by clicking and holding the knob while rotating, or by tapping on the COM tab with your finger, you will find a labeled list of all published frequencies for that airport. Now, you can highlight the one desired and use the soft key labeled Tune COM to send it to the radio. Lastly, you can easily bring up with either the buttons and knobs or by tapping on the COM info bar to reach the radio half page. This is where you get a nice presentation with big buttons to either punch in a frequency or use the digital versions of the radio hard buttons. For any of the frequency pre-selecting methods we've gone over today, once you press tune COM or select one of the radio hard keys, that frequency is loaded into the standby position, just as it would on a traditional radio. All that is left to do is to swap the frequency to active by either clicking the rotator knob in or by tapping swap on the radio half page. The Skyview radio also has a dual monitoring ability. You can easily listen to both the standby and active frequencies simultaneously. A click and hold of the knob on the COM panel or tapping on dual in the radio half page will activate this feature. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.